The U.S.-Mexican border is the most heavily used corridor for human trafficking and drug smuggling in the United States. The job of a border patrol agent is one of the most dangerous law enforcement jobs in the country. Moments of high tension can quickly escalate into sheer horror. Unpredictable captives can turn on the agents at any moment. Border patrol agents work in extreme conditions, endangering their lives under a scorching sun in order to save people in distress. Hot zone operations consist of capturing dangerous drug smugglers. Every minute of every working day, agents have to make critical life and death decisions that will determine the outcome of events. The Sonoran Desert is one of the deadliest terrains on the planet, with blistering temperatures of over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. This unsettling yet beautiful landscape walks a razor-thin line between life and death. This harsh environment preys on the weak. The desperate family of an 80-year-old American man have reported him missing to local authorities. Every passing minute without water reduces his chances of surviving. When someone is missing in the hostile environment of the Sonoran Desert, Yuma's elite search and rescue unit, Borstar, are called into action. Borstar are border patrol agents who specialize in tracking people down and are used to working against the clock. As soon as the crew are safely buckled in, the pilot starts the engine and the earth slowly begins to fall away. Within seconds, the engines hit full power and the Black Hawk helicopter begins to sweep through the desert like a typhoon ripping through the sky. In order to quickly survey the vast landscapes of the Sonoran Desert, the pilot has to fly the Black Hawk helicopter at dangerously low altitudes at speeds of over 160 miles an hour. Due to the increase of traffic in the skies, the pilot has to maintain a high level of awareness about his environment at all times. Maneuvering a two-ton Black Hawk helicopter requires great skill and concentration. One mistake, one error of judgment, could lead to a deadly crash. When working in the blistering sun of the Sonoran Desert, Warstar agents have to be in top physical and mental condition in order to perform fearless rescues. You just gotta be aware that your environment is, uh, is not friendly. If uh, you get in trouble out there, you're going to become the next person to be rescued. You've got to, you've got to be a, a step above that. Say they, you know, somebody's got to make it five miles on foot. Well, we have to go not only five miles, we have to go that five miles back. We've got to be able to walk in and walk out. So we got to go twice as much as the next guy. I switched it on, or I had, I've had it on. As a... Once the helicopter is in the vicinity of where the elderly man was last seen, agents Emblem and Smith get in contact with ground agents who serve as their guides. Looking for track. I'm going to follow the line straight ahead, see if anything comes of it. Border Patrol agents are specialized in tracking the fresh shoe prints of distressed people. From treads in the sand, Border Patrol agents are able to determine the size of their group, their age, and even the direction they're headed. Right OK, I got the man right here. Bring Black Hawk right where I am. Hard left, hard left. The four star guy's down. This guy is down hard. Within seconds of locating the elderly man, the pilot skillfully maneuvers the Black Hawk helicopter into a secured landing position. Agents Emblem and Smith quickly move onto the scene. This is the moment when the adrenaline and years of training kick in. Sprinting over 200 yards in life-sapping temperatures of over 120 degrees Fahrenheit is both physically and mentally exhausting. One slip on the uneven terrain could result in a broken leg. Agent Smith's lungs and heart are ruthlessly working overtime as he has the extra burden of carrying a 100-pound bag of medical supplies. As soon as Agent Emblem arrives at the scene where the elderly man is lying, he realizes that he has died through heat exposure and dehydration. Outcomes like this are a harsh reality of the life of a Borstar agent. 
unfortunately, uh, this stuff happens. This is probably everybody on the search and rescue team's greatest fear is getting here too late. Uh, this is the part of the job that sucks. Tracking someone in the scorching Sonoran Desert often takes time and patience, but Borstar agents know all too well that every passing second counts. There's been times where we've literally showed up and it's been, you know, a minute or two, you know, five minutes, ten minutes to make the difference. So, yeah, this is pretty common. We we're going to be way too late to this guy. This guy was obviously in trouble at this point. Uh, he's got his pants down. He's trying to cool himself off. He took off his shoes at some point. This is his, his last minutes right here. Uh, if we follow his foot sign south. Before handing the scene over to medical investigators, Agent Emblem tracks the elderly man's last steps in order to see if he can find any of his belongings that may be of value to his family. It will also enable the agents to get a positive identification on the man. One of his footprints here, he's barefoot at this time, he's actually in his socks. Took off his shoes, moved around on the ground a little bit, looking for shade. Uh, not a whole lot to be found out here if you look around. Uh, we'll continue to push him back south from here. See, he's staggering at this point. His steps aren't real coordinated. He might have been going for a morning walk, got, uh, got lost, disoriented, couldn't find his way back to his vehicle. He might have bad uh, vision, might not have been able to see as far as his vehicle when he got away from it. And uh, it might have been nice and cool this morning in the 80s, but once that sun comes up, it gets hot quick. And uh, if you're not prepared to be out here, uh, this kind of stuff happens, unfortunately. Once they have finished assessing the scene, Agents Emblem and Smith head back to the base. Although their faces are unknown to many, the exploits of Yuma's Borstar unit are legendary. Agent Emblem reflects on a mission that he will remember for the rest of his life. A number of years ago, we had a kid out here on his motorcycle. Uh, I believe he was 14. He was riding his motorcycle at the end of a busy holiday weekend. And uh, the kid got in a real bad accident with the dune buggy. Uh, it ended up ripping his leg off, uh, complete avulsion of his, uh, one of his legs. Uh, our guys are out here just getting ready to go. Uh, they treated the kid. Uh, they stabilized him. Helicopter came out, transported him to Yuma Regional uh, Medical Center. Um, that's probably uh, one of the most rewarding things. Uh, the kid lost his leg, uh, but surprisingly enough, he was out there a year later. The U.S. Mexican border is 1,951 miles long crossing through the states of California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. The Tucson sector includes the border stations of Douglas, Naco, and Nogales. And it is the highest illegal alien and drug trafficking corridor in the US. Nogales is a dusty border town 60 miles south of Tucson. A 15-foot metal wall has been erected from salvaged aircraft carrier landing mats. This iron curtain cuts straight through the middle of the town, separating Nogales from its sister town, Nogales, Sonora, which lies on the Mexican side of the border. Illegal immigrants will travel hundreds of miles to Nogales, Sonora, hoping to be smuggled across the U.S. border. Day after day, they try to crawl under or over the wall and illegally enter the United States. In order to apprehend any terrorists, drug smugglers, and human traffickers, Tucson's Border Patrol have installed high-tech tracking devices, low-light TV cameras, and ground sensors. 
Border Patrol agents are stationed on hillsides looking down at everything and everybody on both sides of the border. Routine arrests can turn into life-threatening situations as numerous agents have been attacked with knives and other sharp objects. Chasing undocumented intruders can be seen as a game of cat and mouse. The stakes are high and neither side can afford to lose. Agents Bob Bushill and Jim Hawkins are two of Tucson's most experienced Border Patrol agents. They have been called in to check one of the cameras that's installed in a sewage tunnel running from Mexico to the U.S. The tunnels are often breached by brazen, armed drug smugglers who take deadly pot shots at Border Patrol agents if they think that they're going to be caught. Might as well check it. Just go down there and check it out. Taking no chances, Agent Bushill gets his M4 rifle ready and moves into position with Agent Hawkins. They slowly move into the dark corridor and position themselves at the entrance of the sewage tunnel door. One of the greatest dangers that any Border Patrol agent can face is being blindsided by armed smugglers. Unaware if there is anyone in the tunnel, agents Hawkins and Bushill brace themselves for what could be a fatal encounter that could cost both of them their lives. Once in position, agents Hawkins and Bushill quickly push the door open and shine their flashlights towards the camera. Both open. Shine a light at the uh, camera. Okay. They realize that the camera has been smashed. Agent Hawkins quickly enters the tunnel. He has to stay alert at all times as his visibility is restricted, narrowing his window of safety. There have been people through here very recently. And then typically they'll come up and they also go up these side tunnels here. And then they'll come out of a storm grade on a side street, hoping our cameras don't see them. We wouldn't go any deeper than this normally without support because it's a very narrow area and any kind of fight in here, you're in a, an enclosed area and it can be very dangerous. After inspecting the tunnel, Agent Hawkins radios the Tucson headquarters and informs them that a maintenance crew will have to come out and fix the camera. Within an hour of leaving the sewage tunnel, agents Hawkins and Bushill get a call to chase down a group of undocumented immigrants that have triggered one of the ground sensors while walking through the Sonoran Desert. The job of a Border Patrol agent is not just risky, it's life-threatening. A routine search can often escalate into a perilous situation. I was uh, just finishing up a midnight shift and I was out tracking in a canyon and uh, I ran into a group of about 30 people, and the smuggler told them that to pick up rocks and basically kill me so they could get away, because there was only one guy. If they got past me, they thought they'd get away. So I had 30 people trying to surround me and uh, basically smash my head in with big rocks. Tracking a group of illegal aliens often takes several days. However, it does not take long before Agent Hawkins notices some fresh footprints. This is really fresh. Once he identifies them and locates what direction the prints are headed, he begins his pursuit. Five, number two, eight, six. Tracking a set of fresh footprints for several hours requires a great deal of knowledge, skill, and concentration. Border Patrol agents are taught ancient tracking skills called cutting sign. These hunting techniques have been used by tribes such as the Sioux, Navajo, Lakota, Kickapoo, and Chickasaw. Agents Hawkins and Bushill can look at desert vegetation and tell you how recently a blade of grass has been touched by a human. 
they can spot a hare snagged on a low branch, twigs bent or broken by a passerby, or even a single fiber strand left by a marijuana-filled sack. They can quickly discern faint footprints in the desert dust. These are old. <clears throat> you can tell by the way the rain has textured the soil inside. There's a new track. There's an old one. You can see how it's dimpled from the rain. November Bouchel, November 2H. After tracking the illegal aliens for nearly three hours, Agent Hawkins calls for assistance from one of the air units. The pilot of the helicopter flies ahead in the direction of the footprints to see if he can locate the fleeing suspect who is trying so desperately to get away. Years on the job have enabled Agents Hawkins and Bushill to gain a great deal of knowledge. They know that patience and persistence are as important as technical tracking ability. They can't push too hard in the unforgiving Sonoran Desert, or else it will be them who will be in need of medical attention. Within a few minutes, the pilot is able to locate a suspicious-looking person only a few hundred feet from Agents Hawkins and Bushill. Bob, I got sign here. As the helicopter hovers above, Agent Hawkins quickly moves and digs a 36-year-old man out of the bush. When you're in a foot pursuit, it is kind of dangerous. You see how rough the terrain is. So you have the risk of personal injury, just falling, breaking bones, that sort of thing, going off a cliff, which I've done twice already. <laughs> but um, also, you can't see the person's hands or, or the front of their body, typically. And you don't know if they have a weapon or not. And they can turn around and open fire on you and in a matter of you know one second. So it is dangerous. And again, if you have to put your hands on the person and physically subdue them, you don't know if they have a knife on them or a gun. So it can get very hairy. The pilot of the helicopter calls for transportation. Agent Hawkins hands him over to a fellow agent who will take him back to their Nogales headquarters where he will check to see if he has a criminal record. The UH-60L Black Hawk helicopter is 64 feet long and almost eight feet wide. This powerful aircraft is fitted with two twin turbo shaft engines. Within seconds, the pilot can be racing through the Sonoran Desert at speeds of 180 miles an hour and can climb to a height of 3,000 feet in the air. This gives the Border Patrol agents the advantages of high altitude surveillance, peripheral vision, and a rapid speed of response. For the pilot to get a clear view at night of terrorists, drug smugglers, and human traffickers, he uses lightweight night vision goggles. The light amplification device takes available light from the moon or stars and intensifies it. This gives the Border Patrol agents an element of surprise as they can emerge from darkness and be on top of their assailants before they know it. For Yuma's Border Patrol agents, the night shift is the busiest and most dangerous time to patrol the U.S.-Mexican border. Smugglers of drugs and people will stop at nothing in order to ferry their cargo to its drop-off point in the U.S. They will dash across the desert with little care for anyone who gets in their way. Thirty minutes after takeoff, and the radio is already buzzing with urgent calls for assistance. Agent Emblem responds to a high-speed chase between a ground agent and a driver in a white van who is traveling at 70 miles an hour down the highway. The van contains a smuggler and ten undocumented immigrants who are packed airtight in the back. As soon as Agent Emblem spots the van, he illuminates it. This permits the ground agents to lock onto its location. Suddenly, the smuggler takes a sharp turn to the right and heads off into the desert. The dangers are rapidly heightened when the smuggler turns off his headlights in an attempt to get away from the oncoming Border Patrol agents. Such reckless action puts the undocumented immigrants in immense danger. The smuggler can't see more than a few feet in front of his van. 
If he hits a divot, then it could catapult the vehicle, killing everybody inside it. Yeah, they said there was a group of agents. Agent okay. Emblem has been a Border Patrol agent for over nine years. And still to this day, he can't come to terms with smugglers' utter disrespect for human life. It's a business to them. Uh, they need to get their human cargo, if you will, from Mexico to the smugglers on the U.S. side as quick as possible. And then they go back and they smuggle another group. If they lose a few on the way, I don't think they care less. Uh, I think what they do is despicable. Uh, it's, it's the best part of our jobs when we catch them. Even though the smuggler is aware of the pursuing helicopter, he continues to press on the accelerator, barreling through the desert at over 50 miles an hour. This is where they're throwing rocks at us. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's coming up on that first dirt intersection there, guys, right underneath the hawk. He suddenly makes an abrupt right turn and heads for a suburban area only a few feet from the desert highway. Uh, if you guys can get into position uh, just underneath the hawk here, he's bound underneath the uh, hawk on the blacktop. The police and land agents come swarming from all directions. OK, I'm going to light the guy up now. Yeah, yeah. Light him up. He's going north, uh, one block west of Portuna Road. The chase comes to an abrupt stop, and the occupants make a run for it. OK, guys, they're bailing out. They're bailing out. Agent Emblem relays the information to the ground agents, who then begin to chase down the smuggler and illegal immigrants. We need bond. We need to get some uh, people over here ASAP, guys. They're running. OK, I got a guy in the front yard. The guy's in the field, too. Tell them to stop. They're going to come out in the field. The Black Hawk continues to hover over the housing estate, allowing Agent Emblem to comb the nearby gardens, fields, and alleyways, flushing out several of the illegal immigrants. I just had a flare out on the night stuff. So That's horrible. Oh, you, just, you just gotta keep hammering on it, it'll come on. All right. Yeah, there's another. Turn to your right. Right there. Turn right, turn right. There you go. When one of the ground agents heads into a nearby field, Agent Emblem illuminates it with the beam, providing him with enough light to safely apprehend four illegal immigrants. Charlie, how many bodies do you have? On Perez, Alcaraz. As soon as the last of the illegal immigrants are in custody, Agent Emblem knows that his job is done, and he and the rest of the crew head back to base. Agents Boone Smith and Tyler Emblem finish their shift by checking in their M4 rifles. Tomorrow brings another day that will put their survival skills to the test as they continue to secure the U.S.-Mexican border. The following morning, and the Sonoran Desert seems at peace with the world. It covers a region of more than 100,000 square miles. An arid, rugged place riddled with hundreds of deep canyons and caves that offer superb coverage for the hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens that cross the U.S. border annually. The Borstar team start their afternoon shift in a relaxed manner. The mood changes when Agent Tyler Emblem gets a call to survey the Colorado River as there has been a sighting of several intruders attempting to cross into the U.S. We've got a group of aliens that uh, jump the border fence and they're skirting the edge of the canal. There's usually two routes that they can take in this area where they cross. It's down along the water along the edge of the all edge of the All-American Canal, or up and over this hill up here called Garcia's Hill. Also en route is Agent Boone Smith. As temperatures rise to 125 degrees, the state of Arizona is currently experiencing one of the most severe heat waves in the last 10 years. Agents Smith and Emblem arrive at the river and are joined by Agent Michael Bailey, who is carrying an M4 rifle. Yes, I do. What's that? Once they are ready, they head upstream. Agent Smith and Emblem know these waters like the back of their hands. They know every trail where illegal aliens hide out. 
Although the water looks quite calm, the Border Patrol agents never underestimate their terrain. The river is notoriously known for its deceivingly fast undercurrents and steep, non-negotiable banks. Ten-foot reeds restrict their view. Without being able to see what's on the other side, Border Patrol agents run the risk of having rocks thrown at them or even being shot at. Right here, guys, on the right. We're pulling right over here. Agent Emblem spots movement to his right. He carefully steers the boat towards the bank. Once they hit land, Agent Smith and Bailey head through the thick, dense, snake-infested bush where temperatures rise to over 140 degrees. Throughout a 12-hour shift, each agent must drink up to a gallon of water if he is to avoid severe dehydration. The border terrain is no place for the faint-hearted, as Agent Smith and Bailey are constantly bitten by mosquitoes. They also have to walk and crawl over land that is littered a foot deep with broken bottles, soiled disposable diapers, clothes, and syringes. When pursuing illegal aliens, Agent Smith and Bailey have their senses on full alert. They know they could be ambushed at any time with little space to maneuver. Right up around that next corner, there could be a group or there could be, you know, people waiting for you or, you know, just dug into the brush. So it's really, it's really risky coming through these trails like this and, you know, this maze of trails and trying to find the group that, that you want to find. Not to mention that it's real tough to cut sign on this. It's almost near impossible. So the best you can do is know where, where the aliens went in and just pursue them. For many illegal aliens, the journey to the U.S. is the ultimate dream. Unfortunately, for others, the road leads to a parched, everlasting hell. But a lot of times, the smugglers will give the aliens medication, essentially speed which uh, increases their heart rate, increases their body temperature, causes dehydration, they act as diuretics, and it'll dehydrate the people even more, but they can keep going without stopping to eat, and uh, you know they, they get that kind of rush. They get the rush from the speed, but, so they keep going. The smugglers will give them medication and not even tell them you know, what it is. They're like, here, take this pill, here, take this pill. And they'll keep giving them speed as they go, so that just compounds the fact, you know, the, the heat factors on them and, and the dehydration factors on them. So a lot of these people are, you know, have taken medication and stuff, and we'll find caffeine pills and ephedra pills on aliens all the time, aliens and smugglers all the time. After tracking for over an hour, agents Bailey and Smith are unable to catch up with the group of illegal immigrants who have been squatting in the reeds. They take a few moments to pay their respects to a fellow agent who perished while trying to capture a smuggler and save the lives of several illegal aliens. This right here is a monument to Agent James Epling that died out here on December 16, 2003. Uh, he was uh, chasing a group of aliens right off of here. It was the winter time. The aliens were, uh, I, believe China, I believe, Chinese immigrants. And uh, so he was yelling at them in Spanish and English. They weren't understanding them. They had been out in the middle of the river on a sandbar for quite some time. Well, a Agent Epling went out, rescued the aliens, and uh, was passing them up to his partner and said, I'm going to go after a smuggler. And he was standing about knee deep water at this time. So he took off after the smuggler who was uh, on an inner tube and starting to float back south. He took off running in this knee deep water. And the depth changed, kind of fell into a hole nearest we can tell, and ended up drowning in the line of duty. Coyotes are individuals that are secretly hired to smuggle illegal immigrants into the United States. Mexican drug smugglers will often use them as decoys so that the Border Patrol agents will focus all their efforts trying to capture them while the drug smugglers ferry their cargo into the U.S. without being detected. The coyotes will transport up to 100 illegal immigrants at a time. If any of them fall behind, the coyotes will not think twice about leaving them to perish in the desert. Pregnant women and children have been found severely dehydrated only a few minutes from death.
the life of a Border Patrol agent is a never-ending drill, often with life and death stakes. Agent Jones spends over 10 hours a day perched on a hill that overlooks the U.S.-Mexican border. He is constantly on the lookout for terrorists, drug smugglers, and illegal aliens trying to cross the border, as well as snipers who use high-powered weapons to fire Border Patrol agents. Just when they thought the day was coming to an end, Agents Hawkins and Bushill get a call to say that there has been a sighting of around 20 illegal aliens who are being escorted across the border by a coyote. As soon as they get within a few miles of the group of illegal aliens, Agent Hawkins hits the gas. He tests the truck's every component to the maximum as it picks up speed around every corner. When pursuing someone at high speed, a Border Patrol agent needs nerves of steel. There is no room for hesitation when hurtling your truck through the desert's narrow roads and traveling at dangerous speeds of over 50 miles an hour. It only takes one mistake to catapult the truck into a ditch. Several Border Patrol agents have already been killed when their truck hit a divot in the road and crashed. I'll drop you off and I'll go up here. In order to corner off the illegal aliens, Agent Bushill jumps out of the truck and heads off into the desert while Agent Hawkins speeds off towards the border, flying over bumps and skidding around corners. Agent Hawkins has to stay alert as he chases down the coyote who is trying to make his way back to Mexico. Despite all of his training and protective equipment, Agent Hawkins never knows how the situation is going to play out. Agent Jones is supporting tactical operations by watching every move that Agent Hawkins makes. As soon as Agent Hawkins handcuffs the coyote, he hauls him to his feet and marches him back to his truck. Agent Hawkins has to constantly scan the area as he never knows who else is out there. One thing is for sure, Border Patrol agents are constantly watched by drug smugglers on the Mexican side of the border. The immediate danger is the person you're dealing with. Um, you don't know who you have until you get them back and screened and put through the system. So you have to treat that individual as if they are a threat until you have them secure, handcuffed in a vehicle, properly searched, and, and they no longer pose a threat. But while you're doing that, you also have to be aware of your surroundings. There could be somebody else out there, somebody trying to come up behind you. If you don't have a partner or a camera watching your back, it's up to you and you have to be aware of your surroundings because if you focus on that one person too much, you, you'll get what we call tunnel vision. And at that point, somebody could walk up behind you and, and take you out while you're trying to deal with the other person. With the coyote safely secured, Agent Hawkins drives a half mile downhill to help process the 17 illegal immigrants that were caught by Agent Bushill. Arizona has become the principal and deadliest gateway for illegal immigrants. It accounts for nearly one third of the 1.5 million people captured illegally crossing the border each year. An average of 400 people die every year while attempting to cross the border from Mexico to the US. They are willing to risk everything, even death under the scorching sun to get to their destination. Agent Tyler Emblem has been tracking a large group of illegal aliens throughout the Sonoran Desert for over three hours. We're uh, going up to the North River area um, on the Arizona side of the Colorado River. There's a lot of people crossing in this area. It's one of the busiest, if not the busiest area in the United States right now for illegal border crossers. Uh, this is pretty much ground zero where we're at. 
While tracking at night, Border Patrol agents do it from their Hummers in order to cover more ground in less time. Agent Emblem is able to track a set of prints by shining his flashlight along the ground. Working alone at night can be daunting for even the most experienced Border Patrol agent. Agent Emblem has to keep cool at all times, especially when moving through the narrow reeds near the water's edge. If he was ambushed by armed drug smugglers, he would have little room to maneuver or escape. Just checking the water's edge to see if there's any groups that have crossed here on the rafts. Might be making their way up along the river trail here. Uh, as you can see, it's real easy for them to hide down in here. Uh, you wouldn't know they were here unless you got out on foot and came down here looking for them. So. You can't just stay in your vehicle. You got to get down here and, and uh, beat the brush with the, with the aliens down here. You can see right here where they came out of the water. There's a barefoot right here and a couple running W tennis shoes. They'll either swim across or wrapped across right here. And then they'll make their way uh, along the edge of the river through the thick brush here. It's uh, real easy for them to get right back across the river. It's only maybe 50 yards here to my left. Agent Emblem picks up fresh foot signs and is able to locate the direction the group of illegal aliens is going in. Once on the move, Agent Emblem radios Agent Boone Smith for assistance. He then heads back north into the heart of the Sonoran Desert. Tracking illegal aliens can be a frightening experience, especially when it's a large group of people. Well, when we're out here working in the desert, we typically come across, it's usually groups of people, large groups of people. It's not just, you know, one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two. It's, you know, there's one agent for, for probably, you know, 20, 30, sometimes, you know, 40 people. I think one of the biggest groups I ever had, it was me and two other guys, and we had 99 people out here. If a group was really willing and really aggressive, they could turn on the agent, and uh, then you're in a really bad, and you're outnumbered, and your nearest backup would be, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes away. That's if you can get to your radio to call for help. You know, when that happens, you kind of got to, you got to control the situation. You offer a strong, confident presence a lot of the time, that's good enough. The important thing is to go home at the end of the night, you know, go home safe, you know, and do your job to the best of your ability. Agent Emblem has to pay attention and focus on where the tracks are going as there are various footprints heading in different directions. You really, really have to concentrate on this stuff out here when it gets into this harder ground, because there's so many other groups that have crossed out here. You lose concentration just for a little bit. You go to pick up your radio or just take your eyes off them for a little bit, get on the wrong stuff, and spend a, spend a little bit of time trying to straighten things out. So get up here into the softer sand, it'll be a little bit easier. Even though tracking down illegal intruders can take a long time, Agents Emblem and Smith are working against the clock. They can tell by the footprints there are small children in the group. If they do not apprehend the group before sunrise, then by midday the young and the old will stand little chance of surviving the penetrating heat of the desert. I got him up here, Boone. Yeah, I'm gonna throw him my overheads. Let him know that I've got the, uh, I got the foot sign up here. All right, the chase is on. Agent Smith hits the gas, and his truck accelerates through the desert. He knows that he is Agent Emblem's only backup within 10 square miles. Here they are. Okay, Boone, I got bodies here. Uh, can just uh, light up. Once Agent Emblem catches up to the group of illegal immigrants, he stops his truck and instructs them to stand up slowly and put their hands on their head. He then tells them to get into a single file. 
Agent Smith arrives on the scene with a 50-year-old man that was hiding behind a bush. Okay. Illegal immigrants are willing to risk everything in order to get to a safe house in a U.S. border town. They will often travel through the sun-seared terrain for numerous days on end with little water. And this little one here is four. Uh, this is a perfect example of a group. You'll get out here. Right now it's uh, one o'clock in the morning. Uh, if you look north of here, there's, there's nothing but open desert. This group gets out here. Uh, it doesn't look to me like they have much water, and we'll check here in a minute. But come sunrise, eight, nine o'clock in the morning, it's going to be 90 degrees at uh, eight, nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, by 10 o'clock, it might already be 100. So you need a group like this with these kids, they can't keep up. Um, this is, you're, just, you're just looking for problems here. These are the groups that uh, it's important we catch before they get too far north and they get into the danger zones. When we have kids, the parents overcompensate. You know, there's women out here who will be carrying their kids and just, they can't, you know, what's up? Heat, heat distress, heat illness, dehydration, and uh, like, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that you know, there's times where, where uh, you'll find the children and they're still they're still alive and they're still doing fine, but the mother's dead because she's been carrying the children across you know across the hot desert all day and uh, giving the children all their, all all her water. You know, the young males that have made this you know trip a couple times, they're healthy, they're in good shape. You know, they can usually fight through this stuff, but uh, it's the young kids, the women. The older people, they're going to have real problems crossing this desert in day or night. You know, I, I have a, a daughter that's, you know, one of those kids' age, and I'll tell you, I would never, ever put my kids through what, what, these, what these guys are putting their kids through tonight. Not, not in a million years. Six, two, tres. So we got nine, nine bottles of water here. That's a total of maybe uh, four gallons of water and hole for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 people. So four gallons for 12 people. That's uh, this is an accident waiting to happen out here. Uh, After Agents have Emblem and Smith have checked that the group are not suffering from dehydration, they begin to search the bags of those they suspect are smugglers. When apprehending smugglers, Border Patrol agents have to interpret their actions in a fraction of a second as events can spiral out of control. While Agent Emblem searches the coyotes, Agent Smith checks their bags for concealed weapons. Okay, this guy's got a cell phone battery. He's got it inside his bag there. This guy's probably our smuggler. Uh, we'll talk to the FOS on duty tonight when we get back to the station. This guy's a little bit shady. Okay. Arrodias aquí. aquí. They're young, they're in the front. They don't really fit in. You know, you got a bunch of young kids and families and stuff, and then these two guys, or this guy right here. I think this guy is. I don't I don't know. I have to look into it more. Once all of the illegal aliens are in the truck, they are taken to a holding center in Yuma, where they will stay overnight before they are deported back to Mexico. On a quiet road less than a mile outside the city of Nogales, Arizona, Agents Hawkins and Bushill are sitting quietly in their truck. They are awaiting orders to assist fellow agents who have been tipped off about the illegal import of over 200 pounds of marijuana into the United States. They gear up, testing their night vision goggles that turn the night from dense blackness punctured by stars into an eerie green-tinted landscape on which they can see every bush and on which people show up like glowing ghosts. As soon as they've been informed that there's been a sighting of several mules who are responsible for transporting the marijuana, 
they move into action. U.S. Border Patrol agents are a special breed of law enforcement officers. At night, the U.S.-Mexican border can become a place of incredible violence. You need those extra mags, Bob? Um, no. Okay. Agent Bushill quickly checks his M4 rifle as a split-second decision makes the difference between life and death. The Border Patrol agents begin to comb the hillside in search of drug smugglers. While some agents search for the drugs, others stand guard, as their biggest fear is the sharpshooters that work for the drug smugglers. They only have to pop their heads over the fence for a split second, and it could result in the death of an agent. This close to the fence is, is, is especially bad. They know we can't chase them into Mexico, and they'll stand on the Mexican side and shoot at us. So that's why we waited until we had critical mass and, and a lot of support agents. And when we go up here, we come up in force. You notice none of the guys have their flashlights on, so we're using light discipline. None of them are really talking very loud, so we don't want to give our positions away. We're still very hard to see at night. Typically, we wouldn't jump narcotics as close to the fence, but they're only going to this neighborhood right down here to a safe house, so it's a matter of two minutes before they get to where they need to go, so we had to jump them as quickly as possible. And it's a very dangerous situation for them. Agents continue to sweep the area, unearthing every hiding place, searching for the mules and the shipment of drugs. The cameras picked up two more of the mules, and they're running to the east. They were just down right here. We picked them up on our infrared cameras. And uh, Bob is actually the closest one to them, so he's going to go try to see if he can't find them. There is no room for error or second guessing a fellow agent's actions. Everything has to run smoothly and without a hitch as their lives are on the line. An agent finds several containers of marijuana. The smugglers have abandoned their cargo and headed back across the border. As soon as they feel their job is done, Border Patrol agents start pulling out of the danger zone. Although no arrests were made, the agents seized over 200 pounds of marijuana. If they did not take control of the marijuana then, within days it would have been sold on street corners throughout the U.S. It's estimated that nearly half the $65 billion U.S. worth of narcotics bought by Americans each year comes through Mexico. As much as 90% of cocaine sold in the United States is smuggled through the Mexican territory. Mexico is also the number two supplier of heroin and the largest foreign source of marijuana. It's 3 a.m. and Agent Emblem has caught his fifth group of illegal aliens. Even though he understands their quest for a better life in the United States, he is bound to his duty to uphold the law. You just never know uh, who's coming in. Uh, yeah, it's true, the majority of the people want to come and earn an honest living. I understand that, but people need to come through the front door here. We have immigration laws set up for a reason, and and they should be followed. Uh, we need to assure that people that wish to do this country harm, and the people that live in this country harm, we need to make sure that we, that we're there to intercept them as they cross our border. That's what everybody does out here day in and day out, night in and night out. There's people working this border to intercept everybody that comes in. Some do get away, and we hope that they're not the bad ones. <laughs> 